I like calculus, a topic that is probably hated by the majority of the population. But I've found a rabbit hole that I'm sure people will find interesting. In short, calculus is a branch of mathematics that focuses on rates of change. A rate of change of a function is found by taking a derivative of a function. But what happens if you take a derivative of that? Well, that just gives you the rate of change of the rate of change of the function. And we can take a derivative again. And we can do this forever. Now let's begin with the function that actually represents something. How about position? The position function represents the position of an object with respect to time, commonly denoted as s of t, r of t, or x of t. I'll use x of t. x being the independent position variable, while t is the dependent time variable. When we take a derivative, we add a prime to the notation, with the number of primes representing the number of derivatives from the parent function. This is one way to denote a derivative, but there are many other ways to do this. I think this is the most fun. Now that everyone has a basic understanding, let's go down the rabbit hole of position derivatives. Trust me, it is interesting. The first derivative of position is velocity, denoted like this, 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 or this, or simply v of t. This is the rate of change of position, so basically how fast something is moving relative to a point. Take the absolute value of the function and you've got speed, something that's easy for anyone to conceptualize. There's an argument over who truly measured speed first, either Nicole Oresme in the 14th century or Galileo in the 16th or 17th century. Velocity is a pretty basic concept, how fast someone is walking or how fast a car is moving, etc. Position is measured in a length, such as miles or meters, while velocity is measured in a length per time, such as miles per hour or meters per second. The second derivative of position, or the first derivative of velocity, is acceleration. This is the rate of change of velocity, or the rate of change of rate of change of position. The word acceleration is itself a derivative of the Latin word accelerationem, meaning a hastening, which in short means to speed up. It was first measured by Galileo in 1604 and is famously used in Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration is another concept that's pretty easy to conceptualize. Think how fast it takes a car to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour. 0 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour are both measurements of velocity as they are length per time, but acceleration is a rate of change of velocity, the time measured of the change from 0 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. This means that acceleration is measured in length per time per time or length per time squared such as miles per hour squared or meters per second squared. This is the part where we get into some uncharted territory for most, where less and less people will know about these topics as we descend farther into this rabbit hole. The third derivative of position, or the second derivative of velocity, or the first derivative of acceleration, is known as jerk. Named after the noun jerk that happens to an object whenever there is a high jerk applied to it. A quick, sharp, sudden movement. The car jerked to a stop at the red light, or my phone was jerked out of my hand. This is generally used to determine what forces a human can withstand, such as riding a roller coaster, jumping on a trampoline, or going up on an elevator. A way to conceptualize this is to think of a gas pedal in a car. If you slowly push the pedal down, the car will change acceleration slowly, meaning a low jerk and less jerky ride overall. Where if someone pushes down the pedal hard, releases the pedal, and repeats this, the acceleration will change rapidly, making the jerk high and a very jerky ride overall. Jerk is measured in length per time cubed, and with each subsequent derivative, add one to the exponent of time. The fourth derivative of position, or the third derivative of velocity, or the second derivative of acceleration, or the first derivative of jerk is known as snap or jounce. Last time I do this. Once again, named for the noun caused by a high snap or jounce. A sudden sharp cracking sound or movement, or jolt or bounce. This derivative has similar application to jerk as it is also used to find safe forces on trampolines and roller coasters. This will be true for the remaining derivatives, as each derivative basically gives a deeper understanding of the core concepts of velocity and acceleration. This is where people start to have fun with these derivatives, and in turn, the derivatives start to become very difficult to conceptualize and are utilized less. The fifth derivative of position is known as crackle. Named purely as a joke built off the former derivative and finished by the succeeding derivative. Nothing too interesting about this derivative, it really only fits in as part of a group. The sixth derivative position is pop. Now that we have the full picture, we can see what has been laid out. The fourth, fifth, and sixth derivatives are snap, crackle, and pop respectively, which are indeed named after the Rice Krispies mascots of the same name. The first instance of using these derivatives was in 1997. Snap was originally named after the noun snap, while crackle and pop were named as part of the homage to the mascots. This trend continues as we delve deeper. Derivatives farther down are named as continuous connecting jokes rather than practical meanings, most likely due to the obscure and scarce nature of using such high order derivatives. The seventh derivative of position is lock. 
This is the part where the origins of the names become a little foggy and where I'll input some of my own theories to the names. When connected with the former derivative name, we get pop and lock. Pop and lock is a hip hop dance technique originating in the 1960s and 70s. It is a dance that focuses on quickly tightening and relaxing muscles. The eighth derivative of position is drop. Now when we combine with the previous two derivative names, we get pop, lock, and drop. Drop is another dance move that is sometimes added onto the end of pop and lock when referring to similar hip hop dances. The three names also match exactly with the verbs in the title of the 2007 song, Pop, Lock, and Drop It by Huey. These are pretty dead on for them to be considered a coincidence, so I think there are likely inspirations for the names. However, if the theory about the song is true, this would imply that at the very least, the eighth derivative, Drop, was not named until 2007, when the song was released. Which is somewhat likely since it is confirmed that the 5th and 6th derivatives, Crackle and Pop, were named in 1997. But it could also just be an addition to the dance move, which doesn't put a constraint on when it was named. There's another possibility of the derivatives being named in reference to Lock Drop, which is a term used in cryptocurrency, but that seems too recent for it to be any inspiration. The ninth derivative of position is shot. When we combine with the previous derivative, we get drop shot. A drop shot is a term used in fishing and racking sports, which either could be the origin of the naming. In fishing, it refers to a rig where there is a line tied to a hook with a leader and weight underneath it. This is used so the fishermen can rest or drag the weight on the bottom of where they are fishing, or to keep their line vertical and the hook and lure horizontal. In racket sports such as badminton, a drop shot is when a player returns the projectile, in this case a shuttlecock, to the other side of the net, close to the net, forcing the opponent to move closer to the net to hit the shuttlecock, which can help win the volley. These jokes being built from the derivative names seem to be very arbitrary and obscure, but the connections between the pairs or small groups of the names are hard to ignore. Finally, we are at the 10th derivative of position, the bottom of the iceberg, the lowest layer of the inferno. This is the 9th derivative of velocity, the 8th derivative of acceleration, the 7th derivative of jerk, the 6th derivative of snap, the 5th derivative of crackle, the 4th derivative of pop, the 3rd derivative of jerk, the 2nd derivative of drop, and the 1st derivative of shot. This derivative is known as put. Putting this together with the previous derivative gives us shot put, which is a track and field and Olympic event where you put or throw a heavy ball as far as you can. The ball is either made of iron or steel and is 16 pounds for men and four kilograms for women. Weird choice for them to have the whole number of values in different units. Put is measured in length per time to the power of 10, such as meters per second to the power of 10, and can be denoted as x decimal prime. This concludes the first 10 derivatives of position. A weird variation for calculus when considering how serious it takes itself most of the time. In order, we have position, velocity, acceleration, jerk, snap, crackle, pop, lock, drop, shot, put. I discovered this rabbit hole with some friends in Calc PC in high school and decided to share it with everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Thank you for watching.